What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue our coverage over our X-Men reading order. And today, we're going to cover Uncanny X-Men number 96 and Uncanny X-Men number 97. The reason why, because this is the aftermath of Thunderbird's death, but also it is Chris Claremont setting up things to come down the road in his future books. So, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit the like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So we're going to do a quick review over Uncanny X-Men number 96. It honestly was an issue that did have some small hints of things to come down the road, but mostly focused on a character who only appears in Marvel 10 times total. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. But of course, with this book, it picks up right after the death of Thunderbird, which took place in our last video. We see Cyclops is having a hard time dealing with the fact that he lost an X-Men. To him, he failed as a leader. So we see him being upset with himself and use his powers all over the place, which his optic beam does hit some kind of obelisk that was holding a demon inside. Then we focus back on the other X-Men in the danger room who is training. Really more the younger ones because Banshee's on the sideline talking to Charles Xavier while the rest are working out. Then you have Charles Xavier mention that he is going to be leaving for a couple of days, a mini vacation. While he is gone, he has invited an old friend to watch over the place, which is Maura McTaggart. This is her actual first appearance in Marvel Comics. Now her origin has been changed thanks to Jonathan Hickman, but for now ignore that. We then jump over to another secret base where we are introduced to Stephen Lang as he is meeting up with Colonel Rossi. This is the beginning of what we are going to cover in our next video, the return of the Sentinels, because this is where you have Stephen Lang reveal that he has been working on reviving the Sentinel project with the codename Project Armageddon. He wants to kill the X-Men because to him, they are evil and they need to be killed off. But the problem is, he has been waiting for approval from the government and they sent Rossi to review the project to see if it is something they should move forward with. Rossi tells Lang that to him, this project is a bad idea and he is going to tell the council to shut it down. When Rossi walks away, Stephen Lang says that he is going to make sure Rossi does not make it back to the council alive. After that, the second half of this book is more of the X-Men fighting against this creature named Kirarok. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Long story short, he is this creature that was made by another creature named the Shaitan, and that person ruled the world a long time ago. Kirarok is back only because Cyclops destroyed that obelisk earlier. So with him being back, of course, he wants to kill the X-Men and take their souls. Where you have the X-Men unable to beat this creature, literally you have most of the X-Men getting their butt kicked by this monster. Luckily for the X-Men, they had Charles Xavier actually use his powers to read the mind of the beast which at first seems like a bad idea because this beast literally tears Charles Xavier's mind open for the most part. When Charles Xavier comes around, he tells Thorne to literally go find the obelisk that was broken open and seal it back up. Once she does that, this D-list character will go away. So she goes and we do get a small glimpse that Storm is claustrophobic and we see more of that in later books. But she is able to seal up the obelisk and Kirarok is gone. To close this section, we do see that Rossi from earlier did die by the hands of Stephen Lang. Picking up with X-Men number 97, 
This is the book I really want to focus on more in this video because we truly begin the beginning of Chris Claremont's plan for the X-Men. The reason why I say that is because in the opening pages we establish that Charles Xavier has been having some crazy dreams, but also the fact that in his dreams it seems like someone is trying to contact him. In his dream, he is seeing this epic battle between two sides an army on one side and the other a single person trying to escape. The person who is trying to escape is the one trying to contact Charles Xavier. When that happens, Charles wakes up screaming. We learn through Maura McTaggart that this is why Charles Xavier is going to be gone for a short period of time, so he can clear his mind because he's beginning to think that he has gone crazy. Now Chris Claremont brings back Polaris and Havoc to the series who have not been seen since X-Men number 94. When they had left the X-Men team, we learned that they moved to the countryside, at first as friends, but then they had became a couple. Well, they kind of had interest in each other, but now it's official. While Havoc leaves to go take care of some business, that is when Polaris is attacked by someone, of course we don't see who, but Havoc heard her screams. When he gets back to the cabin, he is then attacked by Polaris, showing that someone maybe has taken over her mind and made her attack Havoc. Jumping over to the airport, we see the X-Men team saying goodbye to Charles Xavier as he goes on vacation. Then as soon as he gets on the plane, Polaris and Havoc appear and attack the X-Men, where for the current X-Men, they are confused on why their old friends are attacking them for. And so the X-Men have to fight against Polaris and Havoc, but after a few pages of their fight, that is when one of Havoc Blast actually blows up an empty plane. And so that made Cyclops snap because his brother who was once an X-Men has gone crazy and wondering why. That is when it's revealed that now Havoc and Polaris work for a character named Eric the Red. This is a wild moment because there was a period of time that Cyclops made another alias for himself and called himself Eric the Red. And the question is, who is this person pretending to be who he used to be? That is the thing about this book. We don't get to learn much about who Eric the Red is in this book. We don't learn until much later in the X-Men comics. But for the rest of the book, you have the current X-Men team fight against Havoc, Polaris, and Eric the Red in the middle of the airport. The only reason why this fight ends is because Storm was able to take out Polaris. Havoc gets upset that Storm hit Polaris. But before he could do some serious damage to the X-Men, this new Eric the Red realized that he and his team should leave before they are defeated because they are getting overrun. The book closes on the fact that Cyclops could stop them from getting away, but since Havoc is his brother, Cyclops was afraid to hurt Havoc, Polaris, and Eric the Red. While the fight ends, we see that Stephen Lang was watching the fight from his computer screen. And this is where we're going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.